we are supposed to be growing as Christians. We're supposed to be maturing and becoming uh, more mature every day, every month, every year. And so this week I decided to question myself, and I began to ask myself, um, am I a better Christian this year than I was last year? Do I know more this year than I did last year? But this other one was the thing that got me. Do I love people, and especially the hard people, do I love them this year more than I did last year? And I began to question myself. We're coming up on the election, and trying to be perfectly honest, I do not agree with everybody that's running in the election. But it doesn't mean I'm not supposed to uh, some way cease loving them or praying for them. And it comes to pass with me that if I have a problem with somebody, I'm least likely to pray for them than I do if I like them. Hello. Is it true with you when you have a prayer list, the people you like are on the top and the people you don't like so much are on the bottom? Hello. And by the time you get to the bottom, you're fast asleep. Hello. You pray for all your friends and family and the people you don't care too much. They're too bad for them. And so I, I began to think about this. And I thought, I need to, I need to love greater than I do or what I did last year. I need to love greater this year. I need to love people that I haven't loved in the past. I need to love people. What happens to someone that doesn't make heaven? What happens to someone? I'm going to express some things tonight. They will e spend eternal eternity in the lake of fire. Hello. Now, death to most people is when a person physically dies. But in the Bible, Jesus refers to death is having no relationship with him. He called the scribes and Pharisees whited sepulchers. He called them walking dead people. A sepulcher is a gravestone. So he called them whited sepulchers, and so he said they're, they're walking, but they're dead. And what he meant by that is they had no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They go to church every Sunday. They wear phylacteries. It's a scripture that came off the top of their hat, amen, and looked in their eyes. They had, well, the phylacteries were in the bottom. They had scriptures there too. And they had frontlets is what they had in front of their eyes. They, they did all kinds of religious stuff, but they didn't know Jesus. When Jesus came into their synagogues and sat down, they absolutely didn't recognize him. They didn't even know the Son of God and they're supposed to be uh, uh, knowing him because they read the scriptures daily. And yet they did not have any communication with him whatsoever. And so in this relationship, if you, are, if you have a relationship with somebody, you communicate with them. Hello? If you have a relationship with them. If, you're, if you have a relationship with someone and there's no communication, you really don't have a relationship because the communication is how you stay in touch with each other. If you don't stay in touch with each other, there's no relationship. Hello? And so I find, amen, with people, amen, people call me. They talk to me. They want prayer. They, they whatever. My wife calls me. My children call me. Friends call me. And so we have a relationship. I have people text me with questions. I have people that, that text me other things as well. And so there's a relationship there. But with Jesus, he made it very clear that these guys did not have a relationship with him. They didn't communicate with him. And so therefore, they were dead to God. Uh, a man sang a song. Uh, Keith Green sang a song. Uh, about prayer. And he said, my eyes are dry, my faith is old, my heart is hard, and my prayers are cold. 
Oh, what can be done for an old heart like mine? Soften it up with oil and wine. The oil is you, your spirit of love. Please wash me anew in the wine of your love. And I find that I ask myself, how much love do I have for people? Because this scripture relates that that's how Jesus loves us. When you were yet a sinner, Jesus loved you. Isn't that pretty hard to do? Amen. There was no reason for Jesus to love me. I've shared my testimony many times, but I'm telling you it's the truth. When the Spirit of God began to come after me, uh, it didn't matter where I went. Somebody came up to my table. Somebody came when I was at the beach. They come to my blanket. They came and said, do you know the Lord as your Savior? And I would be studying in study hall, and someone came up to me, and they'd say, do you know Jesus as your Savior? And I didn't realize it at the time, but Jesus was starting a relationship with me. I didn't have one with him, but he was starting one with me. And pretty soon it got to be where I couldn't go anywhere, where somebody did not come up to me and start talking to me about the Lord. And I told a friend of mine once, I said, I know I'm going to become a Christian sooner or later because they're all after me. Everywhere I go, someone shows up, amen, and they're witnessing to me, stuffing a track in my hand. Hallelujah. It, it happened to me, amen. Jesus was looking for me. I wasn't looking for him. Praise the Lord, amen. In this passage of Scripture, I had to ask myself, is there anybody in my life that I don't love so much? It's awful quiet in this church. Is there anybody that I don't pray for so much? Am I doing better this year? If I am, I should be praying for those people. I should love those people even if they're ornery and they're disagreeable. There's people I, I see on TV and I'm watching the news that I, I, I can't agree with them. But what happens in my life is I don't like them either. It's awful quiet. I don't, I don't agree with them, and then I find myself not liking them. And when they come on another channel, I turn the channel. Hello? If they come on another channel, I turn the channel again because I don't want to listen to them. And in some ways, it's not bad not to necessarily to not to agree with somebody when they have a bad opinion. But it is wrong not to love them. Hello? It is wrong not to love them. Hello? And Jesus is trying to get the, these people to live like he did. And when we see Jesus, we see Jesus doing things for people that need to get saved, but they're not too nice. We see Jesus talking to Zacchaeus. We see Jesus talking to the woman at the well or the woman caught in adultery. Or we see Jesus talking to people that, that really weren't serving the Lord the way they were supposed to. We see Jesus showing love towards people that are not very lovable. And so in the scriptures, amen, if we're going to be like Jesus, we should be loving people and praying for them. 